What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so you've got that new 4K display and 4K player. The only thing that's missing is that immersive audio, but you don't have room for seven speakers and a subwoofer. Well, Sony came up with some magic by putting seven channel audio into only three speakers. They're claiming to be able to simulate two overhead height speakers using DSP. They're calling it the vertical surround engine. But before we give it a listen, let's unbox it and see what's inside. The HTZ 9F retails for $899.99. Inside we get the manuals, a Dolby Demo Disc, nice touch. We have another bag containing the remote control, HDMI cable, wall mounts, a wall mount template and instruction booklet. We have the subwoofer, speaker grill, and the sound bar. The HTZ9F weighs in at 6 pounds and is 39 inches wide by 4 inches deep and only 2.5 inches in height so it should fit nicely in front of a television without blocking part of the screen. On the front of the bar is an LCD display and three 2-inch drivers. A magnetic metal grill is included for protection. On the top of the soundbar are touch-sensitive controls for power, input selection, Bluetooth, music service, and volume controls. On the rear are inputs for LAN, two HDMI ins and one out, USB, 3.5mm and optical inputs. The wireless subwoofer comes in at 17 pounds, is 7.5 inches wide by 15 inches high and 15 and a quarter inches deep. The port is located on the front of the sub and on the rear are the power and link buttons. Now let's get this set up and give it a listen. Let's run through the easy setup real quick. Looks like I found the subwoofer and if I had the rear speakers, it would have found that as well. Now for the Wi-Fi setup. This bar supports Chromecast as well, but we'll skip that for now. Let's check out the rest of the settings. Here are the manual speaker settings. You can change distance and quarter increments for the bar and subwoofer. Speaker levels. And we get a test tone. And wireless speaker settings. Here are the audio settings. HDMI settings. For HDMI signal format, be sure to select Enhance if you're running 4K content with HDR, otherwise HDR will not display properly. I'll speed this part up so just pause it if you need to see something. Okay so I hooked up an Apple TV to the bar, so let's test it and see if Dolby Vision works. This is lost in space and Dolby Vision does indeed pass through. Now let's throw in the Dolby Atmos demo disc. Obviously you won't be able to hear what it actually sounds like, but it'll give you an idea of the output, which is rated at 400 watts. Those clips were in Atmos, and when you play non-Atmos content like Cloverfield, you can hit the vertical surround button on the remote and it will use the Dolby Surround Up Mixer to give you simulated height channels. Hitting the display button will tell you what format is playing. The same thing applies to DTS. Using the vertical surround option will use Neural X processing to add height effects. This soundbar also supports DTSX as well. There are also seven different sound modes you can select depending on your preference. So after spending a few days with the soundbar, I was hoping to be blown away. I will say though that if you want to get the best sound out of this bar, be sure to have it at ear level when you're seated. I do have a proper 7.3.4 setup in my separate theater room, and when playing back those Atmos demos, I know exactly where sounds should be placed. The Audiosphere clip has sounds that chime overhead in the front heights that move from left to left front height and vice versa when played back on dedicated speakers. Using the bar, I was able to hear an extremely wide front sound stage that extended above the screen, but I never really did get the sensation that it was ever overhead. Sounds that moved from front to side were convincing at times, but nothing really ever happened up top or behind the listening area. This bar does support wireless rears using the SAZ9R speaker kit, so that may help out the immersiveness factor. 
Like I said, the soundstage was very wide, much like the LG SK9 I just reviewed. Treble was crisp and often detailed, but when pushed at higher volumes, I was able to get the drivers to crackle a bit. This was at levels I normally wouldn't listen to though. Also, these are only 2 inch drivers, and I felt some of the vocals weren't as deep and rich as separate larger speakers, which I guess should be expected. The subwoofer did help to alleviate some of the missing upper mid range, but bass I felt was a bit boomy. That's not to say it's terrible, because action movies were exciting sounding, and it was enough to shake the room. Moving out of the sweet spot will collapse the surround factor, so you want to be sure you're sitting directly in front of the soundbar. Now I may be nitpicking, but for the asking price of $900, I was expecting a better immersive experience. Build quality as well was on the plasticky and lighter side. The LG SK9Y is the same price, offers better build and a more robust subwoofer. Only thing is though, there is no DTSX support. Now your results may vary depending on room size, etc. Mine is on the small slash medium side, and I think it would struggle in larger spaces. This is an okay sounding soundbar, but I feel $900 is about $500 too much. I did try repositioning the bar and my seating arrangement, but the Atmos and DTS X immersiveness just wasn't there for me, so I'm gonna have to give this soundbar a pass. Now if you own this setup, let me know what your experience is and drop us a comment down below. Give us a thumbs up if you found the video helpful, and if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next one.